boy. All right, so what's up, guys? So we are out here on another run, out here doing this craziness for all you guys who simply sit back, watch, admire, enjoy. As we, in actuality, try to change our life, right, for the better. We want to improve it, I see growth, right? Just like a tree is growing, right? What greater thing is it to see a tree grow, right? Rather than uh, decay, right? When a tree is growing, it looks happy. It's progressing towards summer, right? It's sprouting new leaves, getting taller, getting stronger in the base of the trunk. But if it's decaying, you see it drooping down, right? Shrinking and it generally looks depressing. So, you know, don't worry for you because we are gonna give you four life-changing tips in particular for the good, of course. So without further ado, we are going to go into tip number one in order to change your life as someone pulling up traffic. We hope they're all right with that super loud muffler. So one of those four tips in regards to making a change for your life for the better is to, you know, adopt, we would call it a growth mindset, right? We kind of already mentioned it. And what a growth mindset entails is a mindset that is focused on getting better, right? For the simple act, you know, of doing so. Not, you know, necessarily after these certain milestones, accolades, accreditations, rewards, pats on the back. Although this may seem, you know, awesome, they may feel great, offer you huge hits of dopamine when you obtain them, right? But, in essence, a growth mindset has you not to be so worried about it. It's just a byproduct of what you do. And in fact, love to do. Because if you love the growth, you are loving what you're doing. Right? It's not so much about getting caught up in the successes and the failures. Right? Trying to always win and be obsessed with it, feel empty when you don't because the shocking truth, the reality, is that we can't win all the time. All you can do, as far as what you can control, is whether or not you show up. And that is tip number two, right? Because you can't so much worry about the things that you can't control, right? Those aspects, you know, of your genetics, right, your looks, so much in particular, right, of all those aspects of that that you can change. But in essence, think about those that you can't, right, like your age, where you were born, right, your upbringing, a lot of those are outside your control. And all you can do is, you know, regulate how, you know, you let it affect you, how you rise above if, you know, you think it's, I would say disadvantaged or unfortunate, right? Someone may bury you into the ground, kick you, trip you, make you fall on your face, right? That was their decision. But in the end of the day, all you can do is control how you get up, right? Once it ha happens, right? Because we may be able to help prevent it, but if the bad, you know, has already been done to us, all we can do is control how, you know, we get up and how it affects us. So that mindset is going to come into play, right? Because our life isn't perfect, right? It's not all sunshine and rainbows, right? There's thunderstorms and hurricanes and tornadoes and, you know, car accidents, right? Just 
disasters. That's all a natural part of life. And what you have to realize is that it's okay, right? Part of the beauty of life isn't so much about the goodness of it, right? The beautiful, shiny new things, awesome houses, beautiful cars, all of it's great. But what makes life so awesome, so beautiful, is in fact the negative aspects of it, right? That's tip number three, is the yin yang balance, right? The collectiveness of the two, right? The opposites, right? How they work in tandem, right? We can call it success, failure, rejection, right? Losing, winning, it all makes a beauty of our life, right? Because you can't have, let's say, a basketball league where everybody wins, where you're gonna have winners and losers. And that's what makes the beauty of winning all the better. But even too, if you think about it, the losing is going to get you more towards the winning. And if you win too much, you have to be careful before you let yourself start losing. But it actually makes it easier because the winning can get to your head, make you want to cry less, right? So thinking about the nature of the opposites, rather than getting caught up in one side of the argument, the issue, right? As far as, you know, the side, you know, we could say going to school or, go, or not going to school, right? Those opposites. Deciding you feel happy today versus, you know, deciding to let, you know, bad occurrences happen to you. But even if you don't decide to feel the happiest today, you can let that darkness motivate you and push you. Right? Because if you want the happiness all the time, you, you know, may want to pursue vices and drugs, right? To keep it a flow, right? It never becomes enough. So having that natural balance, that yin and yang, being okay with being happy and being sad and feeling all right, feeling calm, feeling anxious, throughout whatever emotions you go through, that, you know, contentness throughout it all is going to make your life change drastically for the better, right? Because so many people, they say that they want happiness, but they don't realize that sadness, that failure, that, you know, upset is actually good for them, right? It's a natural part of life. It's like living and dying. Life wouldn't be so beautiful without death, and death wouldn't be so beautiful without life. People may view death as something very dark, but death can be beautiful, right? It's a, like a ceremonial closing of the book of your life, right? You can't imagine your life lasting forever. Right, the thought of that, right? People think of those vampires that live forever, right? You'll get tired of the world <laughs> being around it too long. So it's only natural for you, you know, to seize your life, end it. It's okay, it's natural, it's beautiful. It provides the yin and the yang of you. So that was tip number three, as far as changing your life is concerned and tip number four is to always seek knowledge we abbreviate it as ask always remember ask always seek knowledge always find new ways to learn get better improve right you don't you know stop becoming the student when the bell rings and class is dismissed right? you don't sit around and become a vegetable at least we hope you don't, right? Because you are always constantly exposed to new stimuli, new information, new experiences, right? If you don't want to open up a book, you are going to learn by being out in the world and experiencing it firsthand, which can arguably be better than reading in the first place, right? But if you're able to read about those experiences, 
by those who have done it before you, you are probably going to be able to tackle them and handle them better. But because you know what others have done, what has worked for them, and what doesn't, and what could possibly be done for your life by improving it, making it better. So that tip in and of itself, using the experiences, knowledge, know-how of other people, is only going to set you full red. Doesn't only come through that knowledge from books and experiences, but also you know getting a coach, a cool set of friends that are going to keep you uh, going, keep you moving forward. Just like those people are honking at us crazily from that car. So essentially what it boils down to is being, you know, in that mindset of learning. Always, you're always a student. You're never too good, you know, to be in that position. But a lot of the most influential individuals people would consider wise, you know, will admit, you know, that they're, they're always learning. They can't, they admit they are proud of it. Right? They never feel, you know, too knowledgeable at one time. They are always constantly getting more and more of it. And that is why people look at them as wise. They look up to them. So those are the four life-changing tips. They always say thank you very much. Thank you. Bye.